through every time I pack. Shaking my fuel canister to figure out how much fuel's in it. These little ones are nice. They're expensive though. And it fits perfectly inside my cook set, which is usually where I leave it as an emergency canister. And then I end up bringing a half full one, just in case. And uh, you know, maybe that's not really as full as I thought. Is it half full? It's half empty. Hmm. Well, today we're gonna solve this problem. We're gonna talk about a nifty little gadget called the Flip Fuel. This allows you to transfer fuel from one canister to another, and you'll never have to pack a half full canister again. So how are we gonna transfer fuel between these two pressurized containers? Well, we kind of realize that gravity won't work. And these are pressurized, not like you think. Not like we pump them up with air, like we do our bike tires. No, they're pressurized for something called vaporization. Just like how when water boils and it leaves off a steamy vapor, well, fuel in here actually boils at sub-zero temperatures. For reference, butane boils just below freezing and propane boils at minus 42 centigrade. That's pretty cold. This is why we see with propane tanks even the small little ones, they have to be built pretty tough and robust to withstand the pressure. As you can imagine, carrying one of these on a bike packing trip would be no fun. It's kind of heavy and a bit big. But what we found, if we blend a few fuels together, isobutane and propane, it creates a very stable fuel that has a lower pressure and actually works over a wide temperature range. By raising the temperature in one can and lowering the temperature in another can, we can create a slight pressure difference. And this is how the flip fuel works. Before we start, let's talk a little bit about safety. I shouldn't have to say this, but when working with something like this, you wanna be in a well-ventilated area, outside, on your veranda, in your garage with the door open, that type of thing. The other thing is the brand of canisters doesn't really make a difference. All these canisters are made out of only a handful of factories around the world. And what's important is the type of fuel that's in your canisters. You want to have the basic same fuel kind, which by today's standards, pretty much everyone is using isobutane propane blends. Now every brand has a slightly different blend, but they're negligible. The other thing to take into consideration is these cans don't last forever. So some of them will have rust on the bottom, some of them will develop some rust in the top, you know, when you use them out in the rain. So just be mindful of that. And if you've got a canister that's got a little bit more rust than you kind of think you should, maybe empty that one first and then dispose of it. So we're almost ready to do this. We have our canister, we have our flip fuel. We need one more little thing to help us. And that's a simple kitchen scale. I'm sure that you have one of these. If not, they're inexpensive to find. One of the things that we need to look at is we need to find out how heavy our canisters are when they're full. So the weight of this particular canister, there's a gross weight, which is the weight of the can and the fuel. The net weight is the weight of the fuel that's inside. We need to know how much this entire can is supposed to weigh when it's full. Now, I've done this a number of times and I found a little trick that I end up leaving the flip fuel on my canister when I continually reweigh it. So I just add 35 grams to my gross weight and come up with the weight that I need. Well, let's go be some science nerds and change the pressure in some uh, canisters here. You wanna place your supply canister in a warm area and you wanna place the canister that you're gonna be filling in a cold area like your freezer. Oh look, some ice cream. Well, while we wait 10 or 15 minutes, I'm gonna have some ice cream, but maybe what you wanna do is, if you like this video, you could uh, hit the thumbs up, you know. Um, you could even 
look down a little bit farther and hit the subscribe button too so you don't miss anything else. Oh, brain freeze. Let's go grab our canisters. Okay, now since we have our two canisters, one being really cold and one being warm, let's transfer some fuel. So all we have to do is connect our two tanks following the in and out directions on the flip fuel. Put the cold tank on your table, open the valve, wait maybe 10 seconds or so. Remove the warm tank is what I found the easiest. And I weigh my cold tank, which still has the flip fuel on it. First time I weighed this tank, it's now at 205 grams, which means I can still put about 40 grams of fuel in it. So I'll reconnect my tank, repeat the process, and reweigh it. So this weighs 240 grams, which is uh, pretty close to what I want. So now I don't have to pack a halfie again. But wait, what if you overfilled your canister? Well, they thought about that. There's a nice little relief valve that's on the side of the flip fuel. All you need to do is just depress that and it will vent out. One of the only downsides about doing this fuel transfer is that you're never going to get a canister completely empty and it's by no fault of flip fuel. This is just pure physics. It just doesn't work. So maybe take what the little bit you have left over and uh, have yourself an outside coffee one morning. Kind of make you feel like you're on a trip. Before you dispose of any of these type of canisters, make sure you contact your local recycler to find out how you need to dispose of these. Most of them, once you've finally used up all the pressure in the, the canister, you need to actually puncture it to allow the rest of the fuel to degas or vaporize so that there's nothing in the canister and then it's safe for everyone to handle. So I think at $35, the uh, flip fuel is a pretty affordable little device that solves a lot of problems. Everything from consolidating half used canisters to like what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna buy larger canisters and I'm gonna continually refill and top up my small canisters because they fit perfectly inside my Solo 2 uh, cook set. So until next time, be safe and have fun. Now where'd that ice cream go? and a regular valve in the room. Well, I think this little flip, 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 fuel, flip, fuel, flip, fuel, flip, fuel, flip, fuel. You know how hard it is to say flip, fuel?